Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation with complex numbers. We have i to the power x equals 1 plus i, and we're going to be solving for x values. We're going to look at the polar form of a complex number and try to evaluate x by using the natural logarithm. All right. So, and see if we can check our work at the very end. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So we have i to the power x equals 1 plus i. i is basically the one of the square roots of negative 1, or you can also define it as the number whose square equals negative 1. So it's not a real number, and 1 plus i isn't a real number either. So how do you find x? Let's go ahead and write i as an exponential or in polar form. So to be able to write that, this is what we need to consider. If you have a number a plus bi, then you can write it as r times e to the power i theta. r is called the absolute value or the modulus. Sometimes it's called the norm of the complex number. And theta is the angle that it makes with the x-axis. So this is an angle. And i is the i. Let's go ahead and see how this works. If you have a complex number like this, this is the imaginary axis and this is the real axis. Let's say it makes an angle of theta and its modulus is r. Then you can basically write it like this. So we have to determine two things, r and theta, so we can write it in polar form. Make sense? That's what determines a complex number. So we have i as our complex number. As you know, i can be written as... 0 plus 1i. So the coordinates are going to be 0, 1. So if you think about 0, 1, it's going to be placed here. So its modulus is going to be 1, and the angle it makes is going to be pi over 2. So in other words, i can be written as 1, which is the modulus, times e to the power i times theta, which is pi over 2. And of course, I know some people are going to object to this. They're going to say, hey, this is just the principal branch. Aren't you supposed to consider all the branches? And I th think the principal branch will work because I'm going to raise it to the x power and it should work. Anyways, so here's how we proceed with that. We're going to raise both sides to the power x. So that's going to be e to the power i times pi over 2 to the power x. And that's going to be e to the power i x times pi over 2. However you want to write it, it's pretty much going to be the product of three different things. Okay, that's our i to the x. And what about 1 plus i? Let's do the same thing for 1 plus i. For 1 plus i, I just need to graph it again. It's going to be one unit here and one unit here. So the angle is going to be this time pi over 4. And the modulus is going to be the square root of 2 because that's the distance from 0 on the coordinate plane, right? So it can be written like this. The modulus times e to the power i times pi over 4. But this time, we want to consider all possible values because 1 plus i obviously can be written as in so many different ways. Let's go ahead and write it as pi over 4 plus 2 and pi. So by adding multiples of 2 pi, we're considering all the branches. Make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and put it together. We have i to the x equals 1 plus i. Therefore, we have e to the power i x pi over 2 equals square root of 2 times e to the power i times pi over 4 plus 2 and pi. Do you like it? Okay, I hope you do. This looks a little complicated, but don't worry. We're going to natural log both sides and then solve for x. How do you do that? ln both sides. So let's go ahead and move this to the right a little bit so we can fit the ln there like this. And then hopefully we can fit it here. Okay. So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and ln this and ln that. Let me use brackets here because we already have parentheses. doesn't matter. Now the power property tells us something. If you have ln a to the power n, you can write it as n times ln a. This can be proven by using the definition of logarithms, very easy to prove. But when you have the ln e to the power n, this becomes 
n times ln e, and ln e is 1, so this becomes n. In other words, the answer is the exponent, because we're ln e. So it's going to be i x pi over 2 equals. Now, what happens when you ln root 2? Let's just write it as ln root 2. And then we have a product. If you are logging a product, then you can basically write it as sum of two logs. And then when you ln this, it's going to be the exponent again. So it's going to be ln e to the power of that. Let me just write it as the exponent, which is i times pi over 4 plus 2n pi. Make sense? I hope it does. Now let's go ahead and uh, simplify this a little bit. I don't know how much simplification we can do, but we could probably, you know, multiply both sides by something. But let's go ahead and do the following first. First of all, I can just write this as 1 half ln 2 because this is 2 to the power 1 half. And then I could probably make a common denominator here and write this as pi plus 8 and pi over 4. Now I'd like to multiply everything by 4 first. I x pi. Actually, there's going to be a 2 here. When I multiply by 4, this is going to be 2 ln 2. And when I multiply by 4 here, the 4 at the bottom is going to cancel out. So we got rid of all the fractions. Now let's go ahead and solve for x. To solve for x, you need to divide both sides by 2i pi. Let's do it. 2i pi, 2i pi. 2i pi cancels out. We end up with x. Great. So let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. Let's see what we can do. Another thing we can do definitely here is to get rid of the i at the bottom because you don't want to have that. Let's go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom by negative i. And that's going to give us i times negative i, which is negative i squared, and that is equal to 1. So we can totally forget about these two things. And then on top, we're going to have to distribute the negative i. That's so going to be negative 2i ln 2. And then when you distribute the i over the negative i, that's going to be another 1 again, because negative i squared. So it's just going to be the sum of these two things. And that's going to be a tan plus 1 multiplied by pi. So we can kind of factor out a pi here. And of course, the whole thing is going to be divided by what? 2 pi. That's what's left. Make sense? Great. So this should be the answer. How can I simplify this a little bit? Um, well, you can kind of separate the real and imaginary parts if you want. So you can kind of write it like 8n plus 1 pi divided by 2 pi and then minus, minus 2 ln 2 over 2 pi multiplied by i. So we can kind of write it as x plus y i. And now here, notice that you can basically simplify these two pi's. A 10 divided by 2 is going to be 4n plus 1 half. And then these two are going to cancel out, right? And that's going to give us, uh, by the way, let's go ahead and uh, see how we can simplify this a little bit more. That should be 2i. Oh, that's a 2 ln 2. I'm sorry about that. I'm like, what is the n doing there? So we have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have the minus ln 2 over pi multiplied by i. And now if you go ahead and plug this in for x, you're going to notice that you'll get the answer. Let me go ahead and show you real quick uh, what happens when n is a special value like n equals 0. You're going to get x equals 1 half minus ln 2 over pi i. Now, if you go ahead and raise i to the power of that, does that give you the answer? It should. You can go ahead and test it out. And also check the result from more from alpha, see what that's going to give you. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.